Hi, my name is Christian Kehler. I'm the director of the Institute of Fluid Mechanics and Aerodynamics at the Bundeswehr University in Munich. I'm going to talk about face mask, and this is a talk I've given to the members of the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Sciences. Let's start with some numbers. How dangerous is SARS-CoV-2? According to a study published in The Lancet, the infection fatality ratio averaged over all age groups, including those who don't have symptoms, is between 0.2 and 1.6%. These numbers look small and the deadly risk may seem acceptable, but you may be aware that the Apollo crew, the space shuttle astronauts, and the Allied soldiers during the 2003 Iraq war took a deadly risk of this magnitude. According to the same study, the mortality rate is about 30 times higher than for influenza flu. If nothing is done against the pandemic, the number of victims will be enormous. I therefore regard the virus as very dangerous. Herd immunity is fatal at these numbers. We need reliable and efficient measures to stop the transmission of the virus. What makes the fight against the pandemic so difficult? 44% of SARS-CoV-2 infections are caused by pre-symptomatic and asymptomatic transmissions. Many people do not know that they are infected and are spreading the virus. 10% of infected people are responsible for 80% of infections. People who have many social contacts and consider the risk of the virus to be low or who do not protect themselves sufficiently are, in my opinion, a serious problem and fewer activities such as singing, sorting packages or working in the slaughterhouse. These numbers show that the government must act to prevent great harm to the people. But what can be done? Since the Spanish flu, it is known that a lockdown can effectively contain the pandemic and save lives. But in the long run, this is dangerous for society, economy, state, and also for democracy. So what should be protected, the people or the economy? The question is wrongly posed because one must protect people and the economy equally in order to safeguard the state, the economy, the society and democracy. Since a long-term lockdown is not a solution, the virus must be fought where it is transmitted. Contact infections were initially assumed to be the main transmission route. Today, hygiene measures and the avoidance of shaking hands effectively prevent this path of infection. Droplet infection is currently assumed to be the main transmission route. Since this path of infection is via the air, the rules of distance are effective. During the lockdown, the distance rules can usually be added to, but what happens when the actual lockdown is over and we meet again in confined spaces? Then the wearing of suitable breathing masks will be absolutely necessary to protect the population. Let me demonstrate this with some quantitative flow field measurements with particle image velocimetry. This technique resolves the magnitude and direction of the flow motion in a measurement plane. Color-coded is the velocity magnitude in the following videos. You can see how a short, strong cough sets the air in motion in an area close to 1.5 meter. In this area, the droplets can be distributed by exhalation. If the droplets are loaded with viruses, infection can occur if the viral load is sufficiently high and the exposure time sufficiently long. Outside the area, the area is at rest 
and contamination with droplets or aerosol particles therefore does not take place. If the air in the room is in motion, however, the aerosol cloud can be transported further. Now we look at the same procedure, but this time the person is wearing a simple surgical mask. The spread of droplets from the air movement is almost completely contained due to the mouth and nose cover. Therefore, an infected person coughing on another person will not infect that person over a greater distance, as long as the conversation is face to face. For comparison, let's take a closer look at how large the flow propagation of droplets is when speaking. Speaking is important because many people who are presymptomatic or asymptomatic can infect others while speaking. It is clear that speaking without a mask can lead to greater spatial contamination than coughing with a mouse and nose cover. This is why a mouse and nose cover is so important to effectively prevent other people from being infected by droplets and aerosol particles. If the red dot is an infected person protected by a simple mouse and nose cover or surgical mask, the air does not spread to the healthy persons shown in green when breathing, speaking, coughing, singing and sneezing. This makes dealing with other people quite safe as long as you don't get too close and the virus load in the environment is not too high. If all wear these masks and keep sufficient distance, we can protect ourselves well together. But simple mouse and nose covers are not able to filter out small droplets or aerosol particles effectively. Therefore, they do not offer good self-protection when the air is full of SARS-CoV-2. I will demonstrate this again with some test results. During the test, the inlet of a flow channel was fitted with various filter materials and small aerosol droplets, which were irregularly distributed outside the channel, were then sucked through the material by the low pressure in the channel and transported away. The aerosol particles were again illuminated with a laser light sheet in the plane of symmetry and the scattered light emitted by the particles was recorded by a camera on both sides of the filter material. The comparison of the particle image density in front of and behind the filter is the measure for the filter effect. It can be clearly seen that under conditions comparable to those of official mask certification according to EN 149, aerosol particles with a diameter between 0.3 and 2 micrometers are not effectively filtered out by the surgical mask. To illustrate visually how reliably a suitable filter material works, I show you this video. Almost no aerosol particles pass the filter material. Now, one might think that a mouse and nose cover or surgical mask made of a good filter material also provides good protection against infection when infected people are in the vicinity but air takes the path of least resistance through the gaps at the edge of the mouse and nose cover. In my view, this is fatal that medical personnel are often so poorly protected. But it's also fatal for patients if clinical staff with a presymptomatic or asymptomatic course of infection use these masks. Keep in mind, the flow takes a path of least resistance through gaps. 
only a tight fitting particle filtering respiratory guarantees self protection within the specifications. To ensure that this particle filtering respirator also provides good protection for people in the vicinity, the respirator must not have an outlet valve, otherwise the following will happen. It is important to recognize the three key functions of face mask. First, face masks effectively prevent a smear infection as the wearers of the mask no longer perform their habitual grip on the face and thus no longer bring the virus from the hand into the mouth and nose. Second, the flow resistance of the mask material limits the spread of viruses. This significantly reduces the risk of infection for others, in particular in face-to-face -face conversations. Third, the particle filtering properties of the mask prevents the inhalation of droplets and aerosol particles, at least when they are tight fitting. Why have politicians and virologists in many countries denied the effectiveness of masks in protecting the population? It was claimed that there is no scientific evidence that masks can protect. There are indeed some studies that suggest that masks are not effective. This is not surprising either. If people use a simple mouth and nose cover, but distance and hygiene rules are not followed, then there is no significant protection. Only a mouth and nose cover in combination with appropriate distances and hygienic behavior can reduce the infection rate on average. If all people use suitable particle filtering respirators correctly, there is no doubt that the transmission of viruses is effectively prevented. Otherwise, these types of masks would never have received certification, nor would they be a core component of the personal protective equipment in hospitals and other environments. It is therefore not credible why these respiratory masks should offer protection to medical staff, but not to the population. The fallacy was to generalize from results with simple mask to all mask. Another argument was that the population is not able to use these masks correctly. Why should the people of Western societies not be able to protect themselves as many Asians have long been doing? Many Asians have already recognized through numerous pandemics what works effectively. I do not think it's right to regard the population as unteachable or even incapable. Finally, it was argued that masks would make people feel safe and then make them careless about the rules of distance and hygiene. The opposite is true according to scientific studies. If you protect yourself personally, you have dealt with the danger and therefore you benefit from the protection of the safety device and from the less risky behavior due to insight. All these arguments against face mask are incorrect arguments. The politicians and virologists simply wanted to prevent the shortage of masks for hospital staff from becoming even greater as demand from the population increases. Let me conclude. If only a few people are infected in an environment and spacing is possible, then mouth and nose covers are recommended. If there are many people infected nearby, such as in a hospital, or if you spend a long time with infected people in a small, poorly ventilated room, then a suitable particle filtering respirator is highly recommended. If another wave leads to 
a large number of infected persons and distance cannot be achieved, a very good particle filtration mask is strongly recommended. I would also recommend these breathing masks for people with relevant previous illnesses. Some people cannot wear these masks for health reasons. In this case, the best protection is to keep a large distance. Face masks can save lives while maintaining social life and securing the economy and the state. If we could block transmission completely for four weeks, the virus would be eliminated. But universal masking alone is not a panacea for two reasons. First, people are not very good at following rules consistently. Therefore, it is advisable to observe the rules of hygienic and distance and to be careful. Also, in the case of a car accident, you have many facilities to protect yourself in an accident. Bumper, crumble zone, belt, headrest, airbag, large head and foot space and so on. Second, some people are extremely bad at following rules, either because they don't want to or because they simply can't. These people can become super spreaders. Therefore, the early detection of sources of infection and the isolation remains important. Thank you very much for your attention.